What's up guys, this is Zenodo, and this is going to be the first video in my new series, Cram School. So a lot of the questions I get, and I'm pretty sure most top players get, are about matchups. You know, how do I avoid getting Mario grabbed? Or what's the best way to deal with Corrin's side B? How do I punish Sonic Spin Dash? You know, stuff like that. So I decided, why not make a video series about it? Like the name suggests, Cram School is not going to be a 20 minute breakdown on matchups. I want to give you guys the pertinent information and practical knowledge. That way you can jump right into your own games and effectively use this information. So unless it's frame data, I probably won't go into super technical detail. Uh, Cram School is going to use strategies that every character can use, but the perspective will mainly be from Diddy Kong, seeing as that's the character I main and have the most knowledge in. Uh, there aren't going to also be any matchup ratios because that's just not the point of the video and everyone will always say something different. Luigi mains may think they be Diddy Kong plus one, while Diddy Kong mains may think they be Luigi plus one. So you never really come to an agreement. I'm going to keep it simple, but I'm going to make it so that the information that you can use is something that you don't need to remember 20 minutes worth of information. And I guess without further ado, we'll get right into it with the first episode of Cram School, Luigi. Let's go! It's important to always know what you're getting into, and like I always say, have a plan. Luigi in the current meta has established himself pretty much as a counterpick character. Characters that rely on zoning as opposed to throw combos give him a lot of trouble, as his range and the fact that he has low traction really hinder the fact that he can't really punish moves on shield well that are properly spaced unless he power shields them. His strongest area is the fact that he has a very severe punish game. So getting grabbed or getting put into a disadvantageous position versus Luigi is very detrimental. He also has a lot of kill power and can close out stocks really early from Gimps as well. Luigi's weakest area is his disadvantage state. He has really low air mobility, making it very hard for him to get out of terrible positions. He also struggles really hard at catching people as he has a very poor run speed. Characters with really high mobility can run circles around him very, very easily. So the most important part of your gameplay versus Luigi is most likely going to be the neutral game. Luigi's neutral primarily consists of jab, fireball, and run up dash grab and shield grab. Uh, Luigi's use fireballs and jab to condition you into shielding so that way they can get their grabs. So over shielding tends to be very bad versus Luigi. Falling aerials however are a very good counter to the strategy because aerials will go through fireballs and usually beat out Luigi's jab. Using rising aerials usually will get you punished with Luigi's aerials or just him grabbing you. Falling aerials, especially if they don't have high cooldown, are a good way to space out Luigi. Uh, because of his low traction and his poor range, he usually won't be able to follow up with grabs if you space them effectively. One thing a lot of players won't know how to deal with, however, and it's what gets them usually destroyed by Luigi, is run up power shield. Power shielding effectively removes all of the shield damage, the shield stun, and the knockback. So it essentially makes your character have to reposition immediately. The key to dealing with power shielding is to essentially assume Luigi is always going to power shield. With characters with disjoints, space further back. So that way when Luigi power shields and he doesn't slide away, you won't get grabbed or you won't get punished for it. With characters without disjoints, if you do the same thing, Luigi can still grab your move because it's still a part of your hurt box. What you want to do is you want to cross up Luigi's shield and try to get to the back of it. Crossing up Luigi's shield tends to be a very strong mix-up and it prevents him from grabbing you most of the time. Uh, Luigi's options other than jab usually aren't fast enough to catch cross-ups, especially if you run away directly after hitting his shield. Your main goal versus Luigi is to poke him and force him into a disadvantageous position, i.e. the ledge or a juggle position. Go for good grabs, go for safe moves, and poke him to the ledge, poke him into the air, so that way you can get him into a poorer position. So this is the fun part. Being an advantage versus Luigi usually means one of two things. Either you're juggling him, or you're pinning him to the ledge. Luigi has one of the worst disadvantage states in the game, mainly because of his poor air drift. Having the second worst air drift in the game, he gets stuck in disadvantage states 
longer than almost anyone. Characters like Rosalina, Cloud, even Marth can keep him in juggled for a very, very long time, mainly because his only way down is usually just to air dodge or fight down with a nair down air, which because they have disjoints, they can easily deal with it. If you have a disjoint, abuse it, follow underneath them, bait out air dodges, just stay underneath them and follow them and force them to go to the ledge. It's not much better for them. If you don't have a disjoint, you have to space your areas accordingly if you want to juggle him, but my advice is to just pin him to the ledge so that way you don't trade damage with him. Nair is an extremely strong combo breaker tool if you don't effectively space your moves or have a disjoint. He can't use Nair from when you're pinning him to the ledge, so it's usually much better to do that and pin him to the ledge than to try and juggle him if you don't have a disjoint. When pressing an advantage state, my go-to saying is always, if it ain't true, it's not for you. Using moves that'll set up into kill confirms off of throws or that you need to kill off the top with usually are really risky at higher percents just because if you miss it, Luigi's Nair is very strong and if you're at a high enough percent, you could just die instead. For the sweet spot percents for Diddy's up throw up air, it exists, but I usually don't even use it in the matchup just because if I happen to whip it and I'm at a high enough percent, I'll just die from his moves off the top. The main thing when pressing an advantage state versus Luigi is deciding in advance whether you're going to juggle him or pin him to the ledge. Normally, whether or not your character has a disjoint will decide that fact for you, but having a plan ahead of time is very huge in this matchup. So this is the not so fun part. Luigi's pressured you into shield and you slipped up and you've gotten grabbed. So now what do you do? Luigi's advantage straight is very strong, but the key to getting out of it is looking for your opportunity to escape and not burning your escape options prematurely. Luigi has a very hard time keeping up with people's mobility options. So i.e. Diddy Monkey Flip, Sheik Bouncing Fish, or just most characters of bees that cover a wide distance. Look for your opportunities after his throw combo and jump out and use your mobility option. Use it high and skirt across the screen and it's very hard for Luigi to keep up with you unless he just preemptively hard reads it. As Luigi is using his combo strings, just take your damage. Don't preemptively jump or mash air dodge to try and get out as you can fall into something even more severe or just lose your stocks just straight up. When you're recovering, recover as intelligently and patiently as possible to avoid running into Luigi's down B or Luigi just simply backing up and up being you on landing. Patience is key when getting out of Luigi's advantage state. Good Luigi's can string together lots of damage, some even can do it into death. However, most of the time, as long as your DI is good and you don't preemptively use escape options or air dodges, you can always get out and reset your situation back to neutral. So in a previous video, I told you to have a plan, so that way you limit the amount of things you can't control to as close to zero as possible. In the Luigi matchup, this is more important than ever, seeing as how he has a lot of things that can close out stocks really, really early. For one, you have to be wary of jab, jab, up B. Jab, jab, F smash, jab, jab to something that's just not grab. A lot of characters, when they get double jab, they'll pop up a little bit. And if you're holding shield after the jab connects, then you'll air dodge into the ground, which gives Luigi a chance to use a smash attack or an up B uh, in the lag that you have from air dodging into the ground. Make sure that you do not air dodge into the ground after double jab, as he, Luigi can close out stocks significantly earlier than he should be able to. The second thing you need to worry about is misfiring. Misfiring is a 10% chance in Smash 4, and it makes it so Luigi's range and knockback gets significantly increased. It's not much harder to punish than a regular side B, other than the fact that the speed and knockback increases. Make sure you don't get hit and anticipate Luigi misfiring. The last thing you need to worry about is whether or not Luigi players can mash. This is important because it significantly increases the amount of options that you can use to edge guard Luigi if they can't mash. Make sure to take note of whether or not the Luigi player can mash so that way you know what you can get away with and what you need to look out for. Mashing makes it so Luigi players don't have to burn their second jump or use side B a lot of the time. Seeing as how side B has a lot of cooldown 
and using your and Luigi's air drift is really poor, so using your second jump can be actually detrimental when recovering if you just snipe it. Moreover, mashing makes it so it's a lot easier for Luigi to downbeat camp characters. In a lot of matchups, downbeat camping is going to happen, like Fox and Falco and a lot of the fast fallers with poor recoveries that can't really get around it. But if they can mash, it makes it a lot easier for them to follow up if you try to recover again if you save your second jump. So make sure you always note if the Luigi player can mash or not. And if they can't mash, you can go really aggressive on their edge guard because if you hit their jumps, then they just die. If they can mash, you really need to make sure you respect it because if you jump out there to gimp them, they can mash their down B high enough to the point where you'll get gimped instead. So that about wraps it up. If you play a character that has a favorable matchup for Luigi, you'll probably see quite a few of them. Whereas if you don't, you probably won't see many of them at all. But hopefully all of you learned something nonetheless. I started with Luigi simply because it's a matchup that I'm really familiar with since I played in one a lot back in uh, the pre-patch era, but I'll more than likely pull interest for who I do next. All right, to be completely honest, I just wanted to use the thumbnail. I'm really bad at Photoshop, and I thought this one turned out pretty decent. I mean, look at this one. Like, Luigi's in the corner of the screen. He's like, Fuh. he's teaching everybody how to body me. I'm not going to make it past round one anymore. But um, the last couple videos have all been kind of lecture types. So the next one will probably be a little bit silly. But that'll have to wait until after Genesis, so that way I don't get bodied. And I get to practice. Um, as always, I love you guys. And if you want to stay updated with my content, subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter at Zenodo. Remember to keep studying. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later.